When you think of carnivorous plants, the first thing that comes to mind are the big, beautiful Nepenthes traps, or maybe the exotic looking Venus fly trap, or the glistening dew on a sundew. But in today's video, I'm gonna talk about a very different carnivorous plant, one that deserves to be in every collection, and when it flowers, it is absolutely stunning. But it's so diminutive that you could walk over it and not even know that there was an entire world going on underneath your feet. All that and more coming your way right now. Now I'm using a tripod for this because my shaky hands would never be able to hold still for this plant. These are very, very small plants. This is a terrestrial utricularia, but what really is cool about their size is it allows you to collect quite a lot of them in your collection in a very small space. Um, the other thing that makes these plants cool is just how vicious their carnivory is. Now, while they look stoic and, and absolutely uh, blissful on the top with these flowers, underneath is a very dystopian world going on. Um, they will produce quite a lot of these flowers. Some of them will open up fully in flower. Some of them will create little balls that look like flowers that didn't open up. Those are actually uh, seed pods that will help this plant spread. Before we get into how it spreads, let's talk about what's happening under the soil surface. So under that surface are more stolons that look like almost like roots and intermixed between those are little tiny traps that are capturing microscopic prey. Uh, what's happening is pretty dang impressive though. These traps, while they are small, are the fastest and most complex traps in all of carnivory. Uh, they are capable of capturing prey so fast that most cameras can't even capture it. And what they're doing is they have a little trap down there that's inflated full of air, and there is a trigger hair on the end, much like a Venus flytrap. When the bug comes by, it hits the trigger hair, and the trap sucks the prey in and pushes the air out. Now, there are videos on YouTube showing this process happening, uh, and while it is on a small uh, scale, it is gruesome, especially if you have a larger aquatic utricularia that is capturing prey uh, like a, a very small um, minnow and if it gets only half of it in there it is going to eat what it has and then suck in the rest so I highly recommend these terrestrial carnivorous plants because once they start blooming in unison they're absolutely gorgeous and they spread very very fast they spread through these underground stolons and also through uh, seed dispersal and they will fill up a pot very fast and propagating them is extremely easy. You simply just pinch off a piece, put it in another pot, and you will have another pot of them in no time at all. Some of them grow faster than others, and if you buy carnivorous plants, let's say sundews, um, and even sometimes nepenthes, uh, you will be surprised in a week or so, usually, when one of these pops up, like a dichotoma or a blanchettii, depending on when you get them. Um, they are an absolute treat to have and they are a great addition to carnivorous plants. But before we get any further, I'm gonna tell you where you can get them from, and then we're gonna talk about how to grow them. Uh, so stick around for the rest of this because the real important stuff is coming up right now. Avant Garden Gallery is a seller that I have worked with for years now, and I could not recommend her more. You, I feel very confident in saying, if you live in the United States, you're not gonna get uh, more uh, options for very unique utricularia anywhere than Avant Garden Gallery. And the prices are fantastic. The customer service is impeccable. Uh, that is why I continue to go back to her because she will absolutely, uh, is very responsive and just fantastic. And you can get some amazing, amazing utricularia. Now this is a, uh, this is a, uh, a very common one but uh, she has everything from magna to absolutely just orchioides uh, variety all the way up, you name it, aquatic variety. It is absolutely the place to go to get this. And I'll put the name here on the screen. Uh, she shops only, or she her store is only through Etsy, but I can tell you very, very much so that it's a verified. I have bought all of my utricularia from her. Uh, only in the United States. So if you are in the United States, it's a great place. There are other options if you're outside of the United States to buy these plants, um, but I highly recommend them. Now let's talk about care and how you take care of these amazing plants. And this might just be the best part. So what I have here now is a very, very diminutive rostrata. 
It's got some sphagnum moss growing over the stolons, which is okay. They will do just fine in that. I might remove some of it just to make sure there's some good, uh, some proper, uh, proper photosynthesis that's occurring for those stolons. Um, but this is a terrestrial bladderwort. So it's just like the ones we've been talking about. The care for them could not be easier. Their soil mix, they love about 50-50 peat perlite or you could do blasting sand or some other type of inert sand. A lot of them grow in very sandy environments, so they will do well in that. But what you wanna do is just fill that up to the, the pot level or a little bit under. I like to do a little bit under and I'll explain why in a minute. Terrestrial bladder orts, for the most part, enjoy a high water level. Um, there are some that don't, but for the most part, uh, like a biloba or fulva, they like a high water level. And what will happen is if you give them an occasional flooding, they will spike flowers for you. And that's why I like to leave a little bit of a lip there. Uh, and then I leave them in a deep, uh, a deeper Rubbermaid tote. So that way I'm able to easily flood them. I keep the water level almost up to the soil surface, basically at all times. I'll let it drop down a little bit to about 50%. Um, and on occasion, I will let it dry out just to keep from having uh, anaerobic soil conditions. But I have found that they do very well in very high water levels. Most of these plants grow on the water's edge and or semi-aquatic even. And so uh, you're, the water that you're gonna wanna use is uh, again, distilled water, uh, reverse osmosis water or rainwater, and they will do very well on that and what will happen is because, see, I've been flooding these and that's why they're starting to spike flowers for me is because every, I'd say once a week or so, maybe once every two weeks, I'll fill up the Rubbermaid tote enough that it puts the water mark or water line above the stolons and then let it drain out and that will uh, cause them to want to spike flowers. Let's uh, look at, now as far as humidity, don't worry about it. The water level is going to take care of that for you. Um, as far as lighting goes, they do appreciate a good light. I would say they do well as companion plants with sundews. They don't need quite that much light because you will burn them, but they do like dappled light. Um, and so what I do for me, for instance, is I have my sundew collection and off to the side, I have them growing. So where they're getting sort of that bright indirect light and they will do fantastic for you. Um, they're just some of the most unpicky, easygoing plants. And like I said, for propagating, what you'll find with these is it's a harder challenge to keep them out of things than to try to get them to grow, especially to the terrestrial ones. Uh, if you do, uh, fair warning though, if you do get like a um, subulata, they will take over. So you wanna make sure that you keep them separated from your other plants if you don't want them in there. I happen to like to grow my plants in more of a communal setting. So I like that I have all these carnivorous plants whether it's subterranean or on top of the soil, or whatever it might be, growing intermixed with each other. But uh, that is the only caveat I will say is they will grow fast. Now, the other cool thing about these plants is let them grow until they fill the pot. And once they do that, most of them, not all of them, most of them will flower, uh, trigger flower spikes because of that, because they can tell, uh oh, I need to spread my seeds out and grow. Propagating, like I said earlier in the video, completely as easy as it gets. You literally just take a pinch off of it, stolen and all, just grab a chunk, pull it off, and then plop it down in the middle of another peat perlite or peat sand mix, and you are good to go. Keep it in the same water tub, same water level. They also like growing in pots if you don't have a tub to do it in, if you wanna keep it on the windowsill. They also like growing in pots like mason jars that have no holes. Now, for most carnivorous plants, that would be a death sentence, but for these, they love it. They are very much bog plants. And so you can simply uh, do that and they will grow leaps and bounds for you. And they will flower a lot. If you get a Sandersonii, which I'll put the name on here, Angry Bunny, it will profusely flower for you and will stay actively flowering for you most of the year. And their little tiny flowers look like Angry Bunnies, hence the name. Here is an example of that Longifolia. I just had a extra fish tank when I used to collect fish and I just dropped it in there with some um, extra sphagnum moss and peat and perlite you have given it literally zero care um, and it just is absolutely taking over this was a small clump not too long ago and it just does amazing doesn't get much light doesn't need it though 
and will absolutely take off. The leaves will get much, or the stolons rather, will get much larger than this uh, once fully uh, grown out with this low light, like I said, about two feet in length. Uh, but this is an amazing plant to own. Um, I highly recommend it. Like I said, though, keep it separated because it will take over. I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this journey of carnivory on a very, very small scale. I believe these plants de deserve to be in everyone's collections. They are an essential part of the carnivorous plant story. There's over 223 different varieties of them. They're small and compact for the most part, so you can grow them in very small spaces in the nooks and crannies of your collection and just see that extra layer, like peeling back the onion, of the wonderful world of carnivorous plants. And remember to shop small. If you are in the United States, Avant Garden Gallery is the place to go on Etsy. She is fantastic. I could not recommend her enough. Her plants are beautiful. They are well taken care of. She's a wellspring of knowledge and I could not recommend them more. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you don't mind. I wanna grow this community as large as possible in the adjunct community on Facebook as we combine together to make a wonderful community full of judgment-free uh, people who are here to help and here to spread the word about these amazing plants. As always, have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. I'll see you soon.